truck to have the cylinders bored, I want to make sure that the the uh, cylinder head here is flat. So I'm going to take a straight edge that we measured the top of the block with, and I'm going to hold it up against the, the bottom here. And I'm going to try to get a feeler gauge in behind that again. Um, so side to side, the tolerance is three thousandths of an inch maximum. And then front to back is 12 thousandths of an inch maximum, which is actually a pretty high number, but being it's so long, I, I guess that's probably why they, they have that number. So what you're going to have to do is go around and clean like all the carbon deposits and things that will raise the straight edge. So you get a, a true measurement. So I'm going to go around and clean all this. You want to try to take your measurement here here and then here and then between each cylinders you want to go so you want to do a bunch of spots and then you go diagonally as well so if you can get a 12 thousandths measurement in in any of the front to back dimensions then you're too too um it's got too much bow in it or it's too warped and then you'll have to have it machined down to well take off whatever you got to take off to uh and bring it into spec so you get a lot of carbon deposits around the cylinders themselves. And you can kind of see all the crap I got off there. But. So you gotta be extra cautious around here and make sure when you go along with the rays you don't gouge anything, especially if you have like an aluminum head or something. I mean, obviously this is a steel head or a cast head, whatever it is. But like aluminum heads, you can gouge them pretty quickly with a, with a razor. Okay, so we cleaned up the bottom of the head here, and uh, we're going to check to see if we're flat enough to inspect. So like I said, it's 12 thousandths front to back, and it's 3 thousandths side to side. So the more, most critical areas are going to be between your cylinders, in here, and like by water jackets, things like that, well that's real close there. That's going to be a critical area because of how close it is, and then here. So that, that's where your primary concern is going to be because that's where your leaks are going to be. Like right here you get a big area so there's, there's going to be a lot of pressure so it's going to be hard for the gasket to blow there. And uh, it's going to be easier between these jackets and between cylinder to cylinder. So front to back, front to back it's 12 thousand. center one. Mm. Try the 3000. So we're measuring that along. Um, so we're not even getting the 3000th feeler gauge to fit between there. So I'm pretty confident it's going to be flat all the way across. Um, so you're going to also want to check your top to bottom, or side to side. So try to get the 3,000 between there. Okay. Okay. Try to get like in the middle. Any contacting point.
it. So I'm pretty confident that we're, we're going to be flat enough. So <clears throat> I don't have to have the bottom machine or anything. Uh, there's, there's a lot more that you can measure <clears throat> when it comes to the cylinders, uh, uh, cylinder head. You, you got to take the valves out. I mean, you probably want to clean them up. I got some carbon in here. So you want to take the valves out. You measure the uh, valve stems. You can measure valve seats. Well, I don't know about the seats, but the uh, the guides. Uh, that, that that takes. I mean, the stems you can do with a caliper or or some type of precision measuring thing. But the the guides you might have to have measured because they're I think they're a pretty specific uh, measuring device to get in there. Um, but you can measure <coughs> these these other things that are involved like um, the pins that the rocker arms go on you want to check those for galling and stuff um, we'll go over those as I uh, continue rebuilding this um, I'll probably make this one video this so I'll probably just make this one video where we start from here and then we'll go through the head for everything that I can measure and we'll we'll see what we got so. All right, so I'm cleaning up these uh, valves. Um, I didn't bring my regular camera, so I'm using my phone just because I wasn't anticipating doing this. Um, so I'm taking all the valves. That's what it looks like all. Oops. That's what it looks like all nice and clean. And uh, it's kind of a. Dirty one. I don't know how well this is gonna work out because some of these are is it this guy. So I had some kind of rusty stuff on there. They sh shoved the rag in there. Where I got the, the vehicle from. Shoved the rag inside the intake, and it was like sitting up in here. So it's kind of some rust and stuff, and mice got into it. So I'm hoping that it cleans up well. It looks like there was enough carbon and stuff on there that the rust just is kind of rusty on the carbon. I'm hoping it's not being too bad. Um, so I don't have a tripod around, but what I'm doing is I'm taking, taking these valves and sticking them inside a drill. Like so, probably a, maybe a couple inches. And I'm not like horsing them right down. I mean, it locks on its own, but you don't want to ruin the valve, obviously. But, I mean, not all of it goes into the uh, into the guide anyway. So what I'm doing is I got them in there, and I'm just turning on this wire wheel, and I'm spinning them backwards, and I'm just kind of cleaning them off. I don't know if I can prop it up. And you can see what I'm doing. Nice and clean. Well, for the most part, There's some little marks there. I don't think those are uh, too bad. I'll have to look at them. But anyway, so that's what I'm doing with these. Um, so I use this little tool here, which is kind of clamped on, it bolts onto where the injectors go. And then this goes kind of one way and you just tighten, tighten 
tighten that nut down and it squeezes all four springs and then um i was having to tap the valves on the bottom to get them to come loose because they were, they were jammed in the keepers pretty good so uh that's the possibility and uh cleaned up all the springs put them all in bags that probably doesn't matter but i don't know i did anyway so after i clean up all them valves i'm gonna try to stick this uh head into the parts washer and clean it up and then uh try to clean up all the uh the insides of the, the bores and everything and kind of see what i got when i'm done and uh hope it all cleans up well without having to be replaced so anyway there's that and then uh i'll reassemble it all right so there's uh some measurements you can take to figure out the the um health i guess if you want to say it of your cylinder head um so this one has i don't know i think like two hundred and fifty thousand miles on it or something of that nature that's at least what the truck has on it uh and i'm pretty confident that this cylinder head has that on it too you know after seeing some of the things there on it but anyway so uh I got some of this chart here i'll put it up on the screen and um some other measurements and things i'll put up there too uh so so some of what you want to measure is when you want to measure your valve face depth which uh you can use a straight edge and feel gauges to get behind there or you can use a a depth micrometer to check that as well just come across here and then you you run it down until until it's touching yes one so what 25 30 38 no thir 34 looks like so 34 thousandths um there's a different valve face step for um each valve um the valve face step for the intake is uh 23 thousandths minimum and 43 thousandths maximum um the valve face step for the exhaust valves is 28 thousandths minimum and 58 thousandths maximum so these are your intake these are exhaust. Um, so, uh, you're also going to want to measure your um, the guides. So the guides is what the valves themselves actually ride in. Um, so it's kind of basically it's just the bore that the valve rides in is the guide. Uh, let's see, valve guide bore diameter, uh, 0.2767 minimum to 0.2786 maximum. So there's that. I don't have anything to measure the guide with. I think you need like specify size rods or something. I'm not exactly sure how you measure the guides, but I'm uh, I'm not doing that per se but I think it they don't have much play in them but um, anyway you're gonna want to also measure the valves on the stem show you a place you can see it right there so you're gonna want to measure three places on the stem one two three and um, let's see what's the size of that um stem diameter is 0 0.2740 minimum to 0 0.274 or 0 0.2760 maximum so that's something you want to measure um let's see your intake valves the seat angle is 30 degrees exhaust valves 45 
overall flatness of the head where, where we measured earlier with the feeler gauges and the straight edge is uh, 12 thousandths front to back and 3 thousandths side to side. Uh, you also want to measure the rim thickness, which the minimum is 31 thousandths. And that is the little bit here from the bottom of the valve to the top of the valve. So when you have the valves reground, it, that, that rim thickness will get thinner. And uh, that's what you want for a minimum. Um, let's see if I can get you a picture. So, and yeah, glare kind of stinks. So that's the rim thickness. Um, you want to measure your springs. Uh, there's a length form. I don't believe I have the length right here. Uh, but you do want to test the force of the springs. Now, stock springs are... Um, specification is 72 to 80.7 pounds when compressed to 35. 3.3 millimeters or 1.39 inches. So that's what you want springs to be at. Um, so I am not using this head at the moment. I got a remanufactured head. Um, I was initially going to just try and lap these valves because I didn't think that it had the mileage on it, it has on it, but this obviously needs some machine work. And some of these valves, I think this one is only half a thousandth over the minimum thickness on on the um, on the stem here. But so anyway, when it, to, to to lap the valves, you need a valve lapper and some valve grinding compound. Now they have compounds that are specifically certain coarse thick or courses. So some are are more coarse than others. So you're like polishing ones and then grinding ones and anyway, but this this stuff is what they had at I think it was at an advance and it's it's like a multi multi coarseness coarseness. Uh, it says there's four grit sizes in one application, uh, 220, 180, 150, and 120. It starts as coarse as 120, then grounds down to a fine 220. So as you go, it just kind of grinds down and it gets finer, and then it so you, I guess you only need the one type instead of the multiple other types um, you can thin the compound with some water I guess so but anyway what you do is you, you take the valve grinding compound and you're gonna you put it on this edge here and on the edge of the seat and you push it in stick your suction cup to it and you just kind of twist it in your hands kind of like a back and forth thing and you want to kind of lift it and tap it and you keep doing it until you get, it changes a, changes pitch as you're going and then I guess you can kind of tell when you're there and it, it'll kind of be have like an even wear along the whole valve um, so that would be how you lap the valves I'm sure there's plenty of videos and stuff on that um, Something else you're going to want to check is the seats. Make sure the seats aren't cracked and they're not coming out. Make sure they're all fully seated and they're not like dropping. I guess the earlier, earlier engines had a problem with the valve seats dropping. Um, I had a problem with some of these valves, like this one. It's got some pretty good pitting on it, so I'd have to get a new one here, but a lot of them have wear on the seat edge there and they got high spots up here and down there and they're uh definitely in need some in need of some attention um and like i said the stem was pretty worn down so i looked up the prices of valves uh intake valves run about 35 dollars a piece that gets you the valve the keepers and the seal I already had the seals because they came in the rebuild kit, so I really just needed the valves and the keepers. So you get, what, 12? 12, 12 of them? 12 intake valves, 12 exhaust valves. Exhaust valves aren't horrible. 
and they could use some work too. Uh, exhaust valves were about $38 per valve set. That doesn't include the springs. Um, so, and then I would probably, if I got new valves, I'd probably have to have the seats done. Um, I don't seem horrible, but I wouldn't be able to, t I mean, I can't see people taking old valves and putting them in new, or new seats and putting them in old valves or grinding the valve, grinding the seats but not the valves. So I imagine they, new valves aren't going to mesh up to this, so I'll have to have a valve job done. And the price of all of it, and then the time it was going to take to do it, started to get pretty close to a rebuilt head. I got a rebuilt head that came from, it's a Mopar Reman. And I think I had it shipped to me for $1,600. So, yeah, it sounds sounds like a lot. But when you look at $800 and something dollars for just valves, and then if you got to get, get springs, you're what, another 100 150 or something on top of that. So it's like you're starting to get up there, and then to have a valve job done, it's, it's starting to get pretty close to just, like I say, replacing it. But... So, here's a part number of the remand head. Um, they were, I guess, I think they're sold through Mopar. It's like a Mopar remand type of, not club, but it's it's like, I don't know exactly what it was. I, I found it was like the Ropa, Mopar remand pro, program or something like that. And I looked that up. At first, I, I looked up the part number, and the part number came up with the Mopar Reman program. And then I looked up the Mopar Reman program, and it came up that Cummins Recon rebuilds them. So it appears to me that Cummins rebuilds them and sells them through the Mopar thing. Um, I called Cummins about a remanufactured head, and I think it was $1,900 for the head, and I'd have to pay for shipping. And I'd have to give them the core charge back. So I think it would have been like $2,200, $2,300 to go right through Cummins for it. But basically, I got the same thing for $1,600. And uh, a guy out in Wisconsin or Michigan, he was selling them. He had like seven of them. And uh, that's where I got it from. Anyway, so I said, I already got the head on. Just, I'm just kind of finalizing this section of the video, that's why I'm kind of going through it pretty quickly. But I will put, um, I will put this uh, information up on the screen, and then you can verify it and and look it over for yourself and take your measurements and stuff. You probably do screenshots or something. But anyway, so that's that's about as far as I'm going to go with this with this head for now. I'll probably keep it. Just in case I come to a point where I need a new head or, or another head or something, I can maybe have this one remanufactured and take the valves out of the other one or, or do something. But So I'll end up keeping this and probably putting it down in my basement until it's garbage and then throwing it away or something. But anyway, so I hope that can help somebody. Thanks for watching.